Right, so I have some thoughts about um, uh, possibly uh, rewriting the application that runs on the uh, 955's uh, front panel uh, to uh, use the interrupts and basically just uh, try to uh, manage its uh, I.O. somewhat more intelligently. Um, whether or not I can pull it off is one thing. Um, it's Right now it sits at a maybe. Um, so the, the first issue is um, inside of the radio is, at least on the drawing, is an STC-12C-5205AD. Um, and all that stuff really ultimately means is uh, that it's an 8051 that's of this package style and that has 5 kilobytes of, uh, of flash and it has a, a, a AD converter and so on and so forth. Uh, and how much RAM. Um, which I believe on these only come in uh, 256 bytes. So that's what's here on the drawing. Uh, what's in the radio is a MegaWin similar to this one. This isn't the... Uh, the number I actually can't find. So uh, it, it's either an old um, uh, disused uh, microcontroller. They don't make it anymore. Uh, I haven't been able to find any information at all on the uh, microcontroller. Um, might try to reach out to the company and see if they could shed some light on what it is. Um, this seems to be the closest fit um, to uh, that microcontroller that's on the radio, which is one of these on the drawings. Uh, and this actually seems to make sense, uh, believe it or not. The, uh, the data sheet here um, definitely... Uh, meshes with how this is um, designed and uh, how it's implemented. Uh, this one also does, um, but there are some things that are that I'm not too sure about. Uh, they're certainly pin compatible between this one, um, you know, and uh, this would be uh, the same as uh, this the, the uh, LQFP32. Uh, as um, this one's, um, no, we don't want that. Where is the, um, the the pins on this guy? It's in here somewhere. Oop. It's in here somewhere, somewhere. So yeah, it's the LQFP32, and they they look identical. Um, they they seem to uh, to match up. So I think it's the same. Uh, basic microcontroller. It's probably just one of them is a clone of the other. Who knows? Uh, the only difference between this MegaWin and this STC uh, is that one of them has a 10-bit ADC and the other one has an 8-bit ADC. Uh, that makes things interesting because you have uh, a situation where this is actually using uh, the ADC. Um, because that's how it actually determines what mode it's in. Um, so, you know, the key 6 line is, uh, you know, going into ADC 6, and the key 5 line is going into the ADC 5. Yeah, so this is, a, you know, a one channel is multiplexed. So it basically uh, essentially takes voltage measurements um, at an interval to see if any of these things have changed their positions, and uh, if so, you know, act accordingly. Um, the drawing, of course, has the voltages on there based on, you know, we've got the 10K. Uh, it's basically just, uh, you know, a uh, voltage divider. So you have a 4.7 and a 1K and 10K. So, um, you know, one of them will be 5 volts. The other one will be, you know, uh, half, you know, or 2.5 volts. And then you have 0.5 volts. So this would be the uh, off position. So... Anyway, that's pretty much how that all works. Um, easy, uh, easy stuff. Um, the question not, or not that I have is whether or not, first of all, whether or not these can be flashed um, in circuit. Certainly they can be. Um, your uh, programmer uh, for these guys seems to use uh, the, uh, the UART, so P31, P30. Um, uh, which you can plug into the, you know, the connector on the front, give it power, um, give it comms, flash it, uh, no worries. It seems to be that it probably has a, uh, a ROM-based bootloader, 
it's not clear, uh, but I suspect that that's what's going on here, that these actually have a, uh, a bootloader that's already uh, burned into them. Um, so, yeah, and I think that's the same for the Megawin, because um, you have the ISP. Um, yeah, so uh, how do they have it connected? Uh, do they have anything in here other than... Yeah, uh, slightly different. Slightly different, and that's the issue because the mega wind's actually what's in the radio and so yeah you have vdd vss and then just p3.1 um so whereas i think this um i had it here somewhere actually used both so this was this is implemented differently um than uh, than this. So, if it's a mega win, you actually need their programmer, and if it's the STC, you uh, can just use a uh, USB serial. Uh, but the mega wins are what are actually in the radio. At least the radio that I have here has a mega win in it. So that's why it's. It just depends on which one it is. Um, and I have to see if I can't find out from the Megawin people what this microcontroller is that's in the radio. Because, like I said, this doesn't match anything that they have on their site. So, anyway, um, 8051 programming isn't too particularly difficult. So, I've got a really simple application uh, in, a, in Keel in the, in the simulator. Um, then just, um, I mean, this took like just a few minutes to write and it's no big deal. Uh, so we have a UART, um, and the way that the UARTs are configured is, so if it receives a, um, a byte on the, um, on the UART, it just sends it back out. So whatever is in FS buffer would be just written back out. So, uh, if I, I type something like an H in there, it just sends the H back out. If it didn't have this line here, for instance, it, it just wouldn't do anything. It would take it and just, it, it wouldn't go anywhere. Because that's, you know, of course, it comes in for the interrupt and um, it's in this um, register. I just stuff it back out, uh, back out through the, uh, through the right, uh, you know, just write it back out. Um, now the pin change interrupt. So interrupt zero is the, um, if this was a real microcontroller, not a simulation, would be the upline. And this is what they're not doing. They're actually not, they haven't written the application like this. Because all I can do very simply is toggle the pin, which is what this is, write to zero, and just writing to the whole port. So everything, all the pins on port three are just getting set to zero, and then I'm just writing all one on all of them. So if I just go ahead and write a, um, a zero to all of them, and then write a one to them quite rapidly, it should just send an X out, which is what it's doing here. So this interrupt triggers, it just sends an X. Now, if I did something like this, um, and I just said zero, zero, it would send the X, but if I did it again, it, it's not doing anything anymore. That's because the pin's still zero, because it's looking at the um, uh, at the, uh, the falling edge of it. So it's already zero. You know, so you need the, um, you know, to set it high. So, of course, it didn't do anything there again. But if I do it now, now it will work. So, easy stuff. Um, anyway, so whether or not I can write an application for these, um, uh, I certainly could write an application that will work for these with what I have because someone found the header for the STC and sent it to me. It didn't come out very well, but I had the data sheet, so that doesn't matter. Uh, I can get this information from the data sheet. Uh, it's just that I don't have to sit here and actually write all this out, which is actually, uh, I appreciate that. Um, and of course it seems to work in the simulator. Whether or not I could simulate the ADC is a completely different story. I actually highly doubt that. Um, but the UART and the uh, 
the uh, the two external interrupts and the timers do work uh, because in order to do the uh, the UART, you actually in this case I'm using timer one, uh, you know, use timer one to clock the the UART. So um, that's all I have for you. Um, this is a curiosity question. I'm certainly going to give this a shot. Uh, whether it works or not is a completely different story. So cheers for now. Till next time.